Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Lunch and Learn webinar. We are so happy to have you here with us. This is the third webinar in an eight part series. And today we'll be focusing on Lutheran Community Services Northwest refugee resettlement work in Portland. My name is Jenica, and I'm based in our Portland office, and I will be hosting today's webinar. We have a great group of LCSNW staff with us today to share about their work with refugees in Portland. First, we'll hear from Anthony. He is our program coordinator for reception and placement. Then we'll hear from Hussein, who is a case manager that works with Afghan clients. We were hoping to be able to have Farida join us after that. She is the program manager for our ORCAS program, which is Oregon Refugee Children Assistance and Support. Unfortunately, she had a client emergency and she won't be able to join. So I will be sharing a bit about her program and the needs that they have right now. And last but not least, we'll hear from Anna Poole, who is our volunteer coordinator. And behind the scenes, we have Jamie and Carrie from our shared services team who are running tech and they will help answer questions. Before we begin, um, I'd like to say a few words about what we hope you all will come away with after today's webinar. Refugees are in the news a lot right now. Um, and I know that helping displaced people is on a lot of our hearts. And this is work that we've been doing at LCSNW for decades. And we are also closely watching what's happening now in Ukraine, as well as other areas of conflict around the world. LCSNW is here to offer programs for any and all refugees that come to us, whether they're from Afghanistan or Ukraine or any other country. Our goal today is to share with you what's happening with refugees here in our own community. Our staff is working really hard to provide all the support that our clients need. And right now that's primarily our new Afghan neighbors. And soon we're likely to be doing the same for Ukrainians fleeing the war in their country. We're here to welcome and serve, and we're so thankful that you helped make that possible. Just a couple of quick logistics. We have the question and answer function up and running. You can find that in the bar at the bottom of your screen. So if you think of questions during the presentation, feel free to put them into the question and answer box. And then at the end, we'll answer as many of those questions as we can. Uh, there's also the chat feature, which you can use as well, but the best way to get your questions answered will be to use the Q&A. Okay, that's enough from me. I'm pleased to introduce our first panelist, Anthony. As I said, Anthony is the program coordinator for reception and placement program in Portland, and he's going to give an update on how we're doing with resettling Afghan evacuees. Anthony? Hello, everyone. Uh, I uh, want to say a few words about uh, what we're doing here. Uh, well, there are two uh, programs that are related to each other. One of them is called APA, which stands for uh, Afghan Placement and uh, Assistance Program. Uh, it's uh, uh, the other one, I'll, I'll talk about it later. It's, it's called RNP or Reception and Placement. So the first program, uh, APA or Afghan Placement and Assistance Program uh, is uh, tailored to help Afghans who have been evacuated uh, uh, or have uh, otherwise entered the US and they're not eligible to receive a special immigrant visa uh, that is meant for those Afghans who work closely with American government. So if they're not eligible to receive SAV or special immigrant visa, uh, they uh, can come to the US and receive humanitarian parole status. And uh, these um, Afghans have been processed by uh, US Customs and Border Protection, and they were paroled into the US uh, for two years, actually, uh, for urgent humanitarian reason. Uh, and after entering the US, they have uh, two years actually to adjust their status. And now it means that they can apply for asylum. Now there are talks though, that the Congress may pass an act that uh, would allow uh, this category of Afghan nationals to apply for green card di directly. That's what SIV and refugees uh, now can do, but Afghan parolees, they cannot do. They have they have no this opportunity to apply directly for a green card. 
uh, and um, this program, uh, APA program, uh, is a brand new emergency case management uh, program, and it is backed by Department of State, and it uh, involves a variety of different services, uh, including housing. So when they come, we are one of our tasks, and uh, it's it's a task task number one actually to provide housing. Uh, uh, food supplies, seasonal clothing, uh, cash assistance, uh, connection to different services, referrals, uh, assistance with um, uh, involvement in uh, ECL and uh, ECL and uh, employment services, cultural orientation, uh, assistance with enrollment in school for school-aged um, children. Uh, that's that's what uh, this program is all about, in a nutshell. There's another one it's called RNP, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, or reception and placement program, and that program also is very similar to APA, and it helps newly arrived refugees and uh, special immigrant visa holders, uh, and uh, that category. Uh, of population usually comes from Afghanistan and some we had some of SIV holders from Iraq in the past, but uh, now uh, I would say 99% of those who have SIV or special immigrant visa arrive from Afghanistan. And as I, as I said in the beginning, uh, special immigrant visa holders are those uh, who work closely with American government. So refugees and SIV, uh, special immigrant visa holders, uh, they, um, they come to the US and we, uh, as a resettlement agency, provide the whole variety of different services. They are welcomed at the airport uh, when they have US die or family or friends here living here, they usually participate in that. Uh, but uh, this is what our agency also uh, helps. Uh, the welcoming them at the airport, we provide uh, them with adequate housing, uh, food, clothing, uh, furniture, uh, kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, uh, supplies. We have an organization that we partner with called Refugee Care Collective. They, uh, they supply us with restart kits uh, that uh, contain uh, all the basic and necessary things that people need for their kitchens and bathrooms and bedrooms. Uh, also, um, caseworkers connect them uh, with uh, all appropriate services, uh, which uh, uh, include cash and food benefits, uh, also week program for uh, pregnant and kids under five. Then we refer them to ESL and, and pre-employment training and employment services. We help them with transportation and um, we set up appointments for, for health screening for them. Uh, what else I'm thinking? Ah, help, we also help with uh, immigration documentation if needed and uh, uh, fi uh, fill out, for instance, we fill out AR11 form which is a change of address form that goes to USCIS. We help them navigate the healthcare system and address um, their multiple issues. Uh, the numbers, uh, some, some of you may be curious about that. Uh, since October of 2021, that's when that uh, APA program officially started and we began receiving APA clients. Uh, so since October of 2021, we received 182 uh, individuals under this program. And uh, the phase one has ended, but we, uh, we've entered into phase two of the APA program, which means that we may receive around 100 more arrivals between now and I assume July of, uh, of this year. The program, the APA program, uh, in itself uh, will be in force until the end of September of 2022. Will it be extended beyond that? We don't really know. Uh, the, the new APA may, may exist 
starting October 2022. That's when the, the fiscal federal fiscal year begins, but we don't really know. I think in the future, all Afghans that arrive here will arrive under RMP program, not APA. That's what I heard from our head office, and that's probably the, 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 the most reasonable thing to assume. Uh, what are our needs and challenges? Uh, let's talk about that. So right now we have housing. Housing is, is our uh, challenge number one. The biggest issue that we're facing, uh, it's hard to find uh, adequate and affordable housing, uh, cheap enough housing for Afghans to, uh, to move into. Uh, so we need help with that. Then also financial assistance, we also need help with that. And transportation is, I would say, right now transportation is an issue number two for us because when they come here, when clients come, Afghans and refugees, when they come here, even, even though they may have some friends and relatives, they may not be uh, able to sometimes help with transportation. So it's a big need in our case managers are overworked and they don't really have enough time to provide transportation. So that's why we must rely on volunteers to provide transportation. Uh, also volunteer support, any, any kind uh, help with uh, uh, maybe with, uh, with shopping, with uh, documentation, uh, filing documents and uh, paying bills, and, uh, setting up utilities, uh, providing cultural orientation, so all that. Uh, we uh, we need. Thank you so much, Anthony. I know that um, this past yes. few months has been very intense for your program, and it was really helpful to get that overview of, of everything that's happening, especially with the, the Afghan arrivals. So thank you for that. Um, thank you. Next, we'll hear from Hussein to um, get a more in-depth look at, at some of these cases that have arrived. Hussein himself um, arrived as a refugee from Afghanistan in July last year. And then just a couple of months later, he was hired on as a case manager um, and has been helping other Afghans to resettle. So um, Hussein, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you, Jenica, and thank you, Anatoly. Um, actually, uh, Anatoly provided uh, detailed information about organization. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, as you just mentioned, yeah, I arrived and uh, I was received by Lutheran Community Service, and my case was handled. And I got familiar with the services that they provide, and later on, I. I was, hired, I was hired here as a case manager. And since then, I, I have been working as a case manager with Lutheran Community Services in Northwest. Uh, um, Anthony provided the detailed information. I'm gonna briefly point out uh, the services as a case manager we provide for the, uh, for the uh, Afghan arrivals. Um, mainly, we right now, as uh, the crisis uh, took place in Afghanistan, so majority of our clients are at the moment Afghans, and they are Afghan parolees uh, who are here for uh, their uh, legal status is a humanitarian parole for two years. Meanwhile, they have to file for asylum. Uh, we receive them from the airport uh, by welcoming them. Uh, uh, provide them temporary housing and uh, we provide them, we connect them and refer them to uh, food services like uh, food stamp, cash stamps, uh, health services, uh, insurance, and uh, school and some other programs, uh, English language uh, program, uh, employment related uh, uh, activities or uh, we introduce them to the job coaches, which will help them get a job. Uh, these are the plus. Uh, plus, we will work with their cases. At the moment, due to 
high number of Afghans that we have received right now. We are in emergency situation. We are trying to provide the basic needs that they have at a later stage. We work on their cases also either through referral or in any other way. Uh, these are a general frame or general picture about what we do. But when it comes to the cases, each case is uh, different, but uh, I categorize the cases that I'm handling uh, into three categories. We provide all these services. Uh, these services would be with uh, little differences. Uh, we also, one of the great support that we receive is from volunteers, which uh, provides a great support uh, for uh, us and for the Afghan refugees. Without their support, yes, of course, uh, we will face uh, more challenges. As Anthony mentioned, uh, one of the major challenges that we face is uh, housing. Uh, that's a common, that's a, that's a problem that uh, whole Oregon state is facing. And Afghan refugee is not uh, an exception, but the, uh, the problem they face is a bit more, uh, uh, what do you say, it, time, time consuming and we need more time to work on it. Uh, as I mentioned that the Afghan refugees we receive, uh, I categorize them into three categories uh, based on their these categorization. We, uh, categorize their challenges and the solution for them. Uh, well, the first type that we receive is uh, without the ability to speak in English. These are the people who face major problem and a lot of problem. They will be fully dependent on uh, case managers and the volunteers who are helping them. Uh, these people cannot speak single word of English or they know only how, how are you with just basic greetings, nothing more. So at the case managers and volunteers need to connect them with the, uh, for the food stamp, cash stamps, uh, they must have a constant follow-up if something is missing. And uh, they need to book a lot of medical transport uh, back and forth. They will need translation. They will move to the city at different places they cannot speak single word. So the case manager is finding a way to solve their problem. And uh, besides they come to a new environment and it starts everything from zero. And the system is a bit different, not a bit, a lot different from Afghanistan. So cultural orientation, often in them briefing them and talking to them uh, while we have many cases is really difficult to be in contact with all of the clients. The second one is they can speak a little English. Uh, to some extent, their problem is lesser than, as we see, one of the major challenges, English. And the third uh, group are the people who are fluent in English. Uh, they will not have hard time adjusting here. Uh, as they come here, they don't have the history of uh, rental, uh, rental history. So when we file application for the housing, we have hard time or long time getting them approved. Though we have group of people, but we have a lot of cases and we receive support from the community also, which help, which, which help them. But in other, we have cases, many cases that we need time to fill many application. And at the end, at the last state, their application will be denied because they don't have rental history or they don't have uh, any job. Uh, when they come, they need to have their proper documentation. Some of them do have their doc documents and some of them, they do not receive their document when they come here. Their document may arrive after uh, two months or after one month and after even some of them after four months. Uh, without their documents, they cannot work and they will have uh, uh, some challenges getting house, getting job and uh, some other uh, activities. And some of them have uh, spelling mistakes with your name. And we have cases that the photo of husband is in the photo or in the ID of a wife. Uh, it takes time to fix all of them. But at the, at the very first stage, we provide them basic aid, food stamp, cash stamp, health insurance, school, uh, 
we referred them to the employment, uh, to the job coach to find them a job and, uh, and uh, introduced them to the volunteers uh, to help them uh, to uh, overcome these challenges uh, to, to some levels. Uh, these are a general idea or general activities we normally do. Uh, when it comes to specific clients, every uh, client's situation status is different from one another. We have big families, we have a single person, we have medium family, we have uh, single parents with eight kids, we have a uh, uh, single mom with one kid. So their need, uh, the need, some of them speak English, some of them can't speak English, the family of 10, like we have a family of 10, 11, uh, they cannot speak English. It's very hard to get them a five bedroom house while in one bedroom house, uh, not more than two people are allowed. So we are struggling uh, with these things. Uh, these are the general services and uh, challenges we provide. Uh, we, we are providing them and uh, the challenges we uh, face. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are many, uh, some other points also and uh, you may have some questions. I'm at your service uh, in case I missed uh, any point. Uh, Jenica. Thank you so much, Hussein. I know that all the case managers have been working very hard um, all hours of the day to try to help these, these new neighbors settle in. And as Hussein said, it's everything from, you know, single, um, individuals all the way to very large families. Um, and the next uh, speaker that was going to be with us today, Farida, she works with um, the families who have children who are school aged. Um, she wasn't able to be here because of a client emergency, but I would like to share a little bit about her program, um, which is called ORCAS. And it works specifically with children who need to register for school and need to learn how to navigate our school system here. Um, this program is, is cool because it integrates and we work together with two of the other resettlement agencies in Portland, Catholic Charities and SOAR. Um, so we have case managers for this program from each of these agencies that are able to speak several different languages. And so in this way, they're able to be cultural brokers between the staff and teachers at the school and the families that are sending their children to school. Um, so they're able to provide orientation to the parents and then they connect students to resources through the schools, um, to summer programs, and just do everything they can to promote student school um, success efforts. So um, having spoken with Farida, I know that there were some specific needs that she's experiencing right now, especially with these um, Afghan families that have come um, one of them is soccer gear. So a lot of the children that have come are really interested in playing soccer and they don't have access to cleats and shin guards and, and other gear that they need, shorts and shirts. So um, that is one area of need in that program. Another is technology. This is across the board, not just for students, but specifically when it comes to students having access to a laptop or some other kind of technology at home to do research and be able to com complete assignments has been challenging for a lot of these families. And she also mentioned that clothing for, for school age children to wear to school is another need. So um, if these are areas that you feel you are able to help or you wanna learn more about, um, you can reach out to me and I can connect you to her. So last but not least, we will hear from Anna, who is our volunteer coordinator, and she can speak more specifically to some of the volunteer opportunities that we have in Portland and ways to get involved. Anna. Thanks, Jenica. Uh, first, I really want to acknowledge that we've had a great response from the community, and we are so grateful for everyone that's reached out to support us and our clients. We've had a lot of really good engagement for the work we're doing, and we appreciate that so many people have offered their support and time in partnering with us as volunteers in particular. 
Um, as many of you know, we're still in the process of putting people and structures back into place to meet the needs of the influx of refugees we've received in the last six months or so. So we also really appreciate everyone's patience as we've continued to work to build these systems that will help to meet the needs of our arrivals, as well as further connect them with people and resources in the community and volunteers. So as um, it's kind of been said, the first 90 days of a refugee's arrival, there's many appointments that they need to get to, and it can be a pretty hectic time, um, not to mention all that they're processing and the adjustment of moving to a new country and a new culture. So we've really leaned on volunteers to help in this time in particular with transportation to their many appointments. And that remains a high need that we have from volunteers helping to provide transportation. Um, beyond the 90 days of an, uh, a refugee's arrival, the needs continue to evolve. So we've had volunteers now helping people move from temporary housing to their more permanent homes. Um, volunteers have helped to provide furniture and donations to furnish these homes. Um, as our arrivals have settled in a little bit more, we've started to reach out to volunteers to assist with English language lessons, um, some career coaching, and just kind of other various needs and requests as they come up, which is one of the main things to know with working with us as a volunteer is that the needs are continuing to evolve. So being flexible as a volunteer is greatly appreciated. Um, and also that no one is by any means late. If they want to get involved now, it's a great time to get started and help our new community, community members further integrate and make Portland their home. Um, and we still need volunteers to help with the basics like providing transportation. And with us slated to start to receive more arrivals in April, we certainly don't see these needs changing anytime soon and just continuing to expand and evolve. Thank you so much, Anna. All right, well, we are open now for Q&A and I would like all the panelists to turn their video on so we can see everyone's face. Anthony, hopefully we can join too. Um, so there looks like there's some really good questions in here. Um, Question on school referrals. For the preschool aged children, is it possible to get them into the free preschool programs, the ones in Washington or Multnomah counties? I think Anthony or Hussein, this is probably a good question for one of you. Oh, you're muted. Let me see. There you go. One of the jobs we do is referral, and uh, the referral is uh, taking place. Uh, yeah, we do referral. Uh, it our we have a team which is called Orcas. At the beginning, you point out the in charge is Farida. She knows the details of uh, the who is eligible. Either it's going to be free or not. Majority of the program that we introduce them are free. And uh, I, I guess uh, Anthony has the, the specific answer for this. Yeah, he may have had to step away for. Uh, yeah, issue, there's a second question. I see another question. It's about uh, social security. Yeah, the question I see it is from Caroline. Uh, uh, not only social security, the uh, Afghans who were at the camps at different states, uh, officials, they applied for them uh, for their social security and for their employment authorization core or EAD or work permit. Some of them, they brought their social security here when they traveled to Portland. And uh, for some of them, when they arrived after a couple of weeks and for some of them after a couple of months, they received their social security and employment authorization card or work permit. And we noticed uh, that there were uh, spelling mistakes, date of birth mistakes, and some other. 
uh, based on our time, we applied for the changes for a few of them. As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, uh, initially we focus, we want to make sure that they have food, uh, they, they, they do receive food assistance, cash assistance, they have a shelter for themselves, they receive the health insurance, they would be able to get their, to their medical appointments and these things. So we are uh, focused mainly on in these things. The second one uh, or the second option or the second work that we will be doing at a later stage will be fixing their uh, date of birth or these typing mistakes or other mistakes that happen in their uh, card. Uh, we have uh, been able to do for a few of them, but for, for the rest of them, we have cases is still, we have not been able to apply for the correction of their documents. I know that it should be done at the beginning, but uh, that is out of uh, uh, our hand and uh, we don't have enough time. Uh, to do uh, that at the beginning. Thank you, Hussein. You're welcome. Um, Anna, there is a question here about Portlanders that want to help by volunteering um, and about our strategy as it relates to the, the new federal sponsor circle program, um, which I know has been a new and evolving type of program and way to help. Do you want to speak at all about group volunteering? and sponsorship? Sure, that is one of the, the pieces that we are still kind of actively working on putting more formally in place. We do have a structure, it's, it's, it's evolving a bit, but um, we, to my knowledge, we are not directly um, working with that federal program that was mentioned in that question, um, but we are working with groups that want to get involved to volunteer together. Um, we kind of have five key areas that we're asking for their assistance and some of them were mentioned by some of the other speakers. Um, and it's really uh, best to match groups up with families or individuals that have been here beyond that first 90 days. Um, the first 90 days, um, as was mentioned, can be pretty hectic, a lot going on, a lot of appointments, kind of a lot of just administrative type things that need to be um, taken care of. And then after that 90 day period, when people have had time to adjust a little bit more and they have the headspace to think about things like, um, you know, trying to tackle English um, or being able to use some of these services that they've now been provided. So we have been working with groups to, for example, help some of our um, families go to the grocery store grocery store and learn how to use the SNAP benefits card or help navigate systems like using the bus. Um, so again, we have kind of five different key areas that we ask groups to focus on. Um, and uh, we've just been meeting with groups um, kind of individually to talk through what their vision is, what they think that they can provide, um, if they have some specifics. Um, we have some, some groups that do have housing where they want to provide or try and find housing. So um, that, that's been fantastic because as that has also been mentioned, that is a really high need um, and a difficult aspect right now is finding housing. Um, it's certainly not anything that we would require from a group, but um, that has been a piece that's been in, uh, that's come up. So again, we're just kind of working with these um, groups individually. Um, and focusing in these uh, five key areas, which I would be happy to um, share through email if there's someone that, that wants to know more specific information. Um, maybe I'll put my email in the chat or if, if Jamie wants to put it in there or someone who's running on the tech side, um, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to, to share more about that. Um, there's a question about whether the medical insurance includes dental and how long the medical insurance lasts. Susan, are you able to answer that? Uh, the medical insurance they receive are pretty basic. And uh, yeah, it is between six to eight months and normally it is extended to one year. It does cover it that does cover uh, dental, it covers dental also. 
uh, but it is basic. It, uh, it uh, includes some basic check checkups and uh, cleaning, not the pre-healing or root canal. It's uh, very basic. Thank you. Uh, there's a question about whether we have a program in Portland to foster unaccompanied minors. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Hussein, but that is not one of the programs that we have in Portland. We do have a program in another one of our locations that is focused on unaccompanied refugee minors, but in Portland, um, that is not one of our programs. All right. Do you have training videos for refugees on bus use, rail use, grocery store, or other common daily topics? This is one of the very, very important topic, especially for Afghans who can't speak English and navigating in this city without knowing the transport is really difficult. Unfortunately, we do not have. I was thinking about uh, making a video on how to use Google map. Um, in the Google map, you find options for the bus and uh, max or train. Uh, but uh, due to lack of time and having a lot of case and focusing in other areas, we haven't been able to make uh, such a thing. Uh, there is a need, yeah, definitely a need uh, to teach them or a video a tutorial about how to use the bus and uh, grocery store and some other basic needs or daily basic needs of the clients. Great. Thank you both so much for that. Well, before we wrap up, um, I want to let you all know that tonight there will be a panel discussion called Understanding the Ukrainian War with some of our Ukrainian staff here in Portland. Um, Carrie can drop those details in the chat. Uh, these staff members are going to share their thoughts on the Russian invasion and some reflections on being Ukrainian and actionable ways to support Ukrainians both at home and abroad. That begins at 7 p.m. Um, so feel free to join if you're able. There's no registration required. We also have five more Lunch and Learn webinars in this series, so please check those out. Um, and register for any and all that interests you. Next week, we will be talking with Vancouver staff to hear more about what's happening with refugees in Vancouver. And then on April 13th, we'll have our next Portland focused event. And we're gonna be talking about some of our other programs here that serve refugees and immigrants uh, beyond resettlement. So thank you again for joining us and have a wonderful rest of your day.